1. When I was 9 or 10, I lived in a very rural community in Washington. I was homeschooled for most of my childhood and had a very close friendship with another homeschool family that I met through some alternative schooling. There were four girls, one was a baby and one boy, who mostly didn't like being surrounded by a bunch of girls. This family lived on a large piece of land about one-third of a mile from the highway and over one mile from any neighbors. One summer night when I was staying over, the four of us girls decided to stay out in the tent. We did what most kids do, told scary stories and tried to freak each other out. This may have been a result of active imaginations, but I remember it vividly. Sometime around 10 p.m., we were getting ready to go to sleep when we saw lights and heard a truck coming down the driveway. Being that it was summer, we didn't think much of it. Since the family was heavily active in the community, we assumed a friend was just stopping by. But still being curious, we decided to see who it was. When we poked our heads out of the tent, there was no one there. Slightly freaked out, we rationalized it was probably a logging truck whose lights had hit our tent perfectly on its way by in the highway. We were just starting to feel comfortable again when we saw the lights and heard another truck. Again, we looked out and saw no one. Thinking that we had just freaked ourselves out with stories, we gave sleeping one more try. About 20 minutes later, the truck and lights were back. This time, we all laid perfectly still and listened. The truck stopped outside our tent. Doors slammed and Boots walked up the steps and across the porch of the house, about 50 yards from the tent. At this point, we knew we weren't crazy. So once the sound stopped, we ran like crazy back to the house and into the living room where we stayed for the rest of the night. It had been years since this happened, and I chalked it up to my imagination, thinking I had probably dreamed it up. Until about three months ago, when I was talking to my mom and she told me that the day after this story took place, my friend's mom called her and told her how scared we were. It freaks me out knowing that it really happened. 2. A few years ago I had what I was told by a medium, a small nuisance that wants to be a big deal one day, attach itself to my closet. My giant mastiff was always uneasy in my room, and would occasionally growl at the closet. From time to time I would come in and things would be thrown out of the closet. I would ask everyone in my house, but they'd say no, my door was locked the way I left it. Finally one day I came home and a dress I was extremely fond of was in the middle of the floor, and I knew something wasn't right. I never really mentioned it to anyone, but kind of kept myself guarded. A few months of random menial things pass. My friend invited me to a family barbecue, and I decide time out of my room would be a good idea. I wasn't there long before her cousin started following me around, asking if I'm okay, to which I said, yeah, sure. A few hours pass and we're all sitting around with our drinks, and her cousin announces that I have something to share. Apparently, this family has had their own experiences with the supernatural. And my friend's cousin is a medium. I remain skeptical, and insist she tells me what she thinks is going on without indulging anything. She grabs my hand and stares into my eyes for a little, before nodding and explaining the nuisance. Another cousin at the table apparently had a similar run-in on a larger, more dangerous scale. The medium tells me that every time I come in my room or think about it, I need to focus on something, but make sure it's the same thing every time. The entity would supposedly attach itself to that, and then I could remove it. Guys, that's how it went down. I, in all my absent-mindedness, accidentally focused on my dream catcher that I made myself. I've never had such intense, scary dreams in my life. It took me three days to realize what I'd done, so I tried to attach it to something else. The fourth night I had the most intense dream to date that I had defeated the entity in my dream. My room felt lighter, but I didn't want to take any chances. 
I put the Dreamcatcher in a beloved book of mine and packaged it away in storage and didn't have any other incidents. Three years passed and I moved. I don't know what I was thinking, but I hung the Dreamcatcher back up. I guess I expect the thing to move on since that dream. Now every time I spend anything longer than five minutes in my room, I feel intense danger. Any ideas? Does this sound familiar to anyone? Also, I know I'm not the smartest. I guess I thought the thing was gone. Or maybe this is different. 3. When I was 16, me and my friend would go skateboarding all the time. Pretty much every day. On school nights, I'd usually be back home around 9 or 10. But on the weekends, we'd be out much later. Sometimes not even coming back till 3 a.m. We'd go for miles, just riding and talking and having a great time. We'd always talk about going to the next town over. It was fairly close, and most of it was downhill. It took us a lot longer than we anticipated to get there. But by the time we finally got there, it was already pitch black out. There's a road that goes winding back to the school. My friend didn't go to this school and didn't know the area at all. I did know the area, but didn't go to the school. I had a relative that lived around here. I suggest we take this windy road cause it was really smooth and led to a nice spot to skate at. We start going down the road and notice that it had a lot of roads that went off to it. We decide to scrap the original idea of going down the windy road and decide to take one of the roads coming off of it. I don't know where these roads led. It's dark and I was never on them a lot, so the opportunity to explore was there. We settle for a road that goes down and then back up, just enough to get some nice speed going, but not enough to get up to the other side without having to walk home. There was one problem. This road had absolutely no street lights on it, and none of the houses on it had their lights on, so it was pitch black. It looked really creepy. We went down it thinking, it's just a road with no lights. I checked the time, I remember vividly what time it was, 11.53pm. I turned my flashlight on that basically did nothing. We were both scared we didn't feel right. We both felt like we were being watched. We ignored it and tried to have fun, because we loved exploring. We skated down the little street, it was on a very slight slope, just enough to gain some speed. At some point, I pull ahead of my friend. I'm just enjoying the wind and looking around. I still feel like I was being watched. I look down at the road. It's going straight and up ahead. There's a road to my right, like a T intersection. Nobody is there. I get to the bottom of the hill where the slope stops and hit a patch of gravel, throwing me off my board. And right at the intersection, I see a lady with hair to her shoulders, wearing what almost looks like a white wedding dress, crossed with a white nightgown. Standing beside her is a little girl and a dog. The little girl had a dress on, it was pink. She had longer hair than the adult. The dog was a pug, if I remember correctly. It was on a leash, but neither the little girl or the lady were holding it. It was just laying on the ground. The lady didn't say anything to me, she just grinned slightly. They didn't move whatsoever. The dog didn't. Nothing. I'm scared shitless because not even five seconds ago, I had looked exactly where they were standing and nobody was there. I was watching that intersection like a hawk. Up until the moment I fell, I was making sure a car wasn't coming. I start getting up. The lady, girl and the dog all as still as a statue, not moving or showing any emotion whatsoever. My friend snakes and stops right beside me, and asks if I'm okay, I said yeah, and asked if he saw what just happened, referring to the people popping out of nowhere. He said yes. I look at the mom and ask why they are out so late. She doesn't say anything. I also want to mention the little girl and the dog hadn't even moved at all yet. The only one that is moving at all is the adult, and she is only moving her eyes and making slight facial movements. Me and my friend run up the road, 
After about a second of running, I look back and nobody is there. Me and my friend are freaking out, and I call my mom and explain what happened and ask if she can come pick us up. Luckily, she was just coming back, and her and her boyfriend were on their way back to my mom's house. We didn't all live together at the time, so they were willing to pick us up. They had questions about the whole incident when we got into the car. We drove back to where it happened. We didn't see anything. A few days later, I'm at a Walgreens with my mom. I see a dad and his daughter. The little girl looks almost exactly like the little girl I saw on that night. They are picking out a card. The card said on the cover, You will be missed. I ran back to the car, shaking out of fear. It's something I will never forget. I'm getting chills and a lump in my throat just thinking about it. Something wasn't normal. Few things I'd like to mention. The intersection. I could see quite far back it while coming down the slope and going up the other end. I don't see how they would have disappeared from that spot when I had my back to them for one second, two seconds tops. Even if they ran, I'd still be able to see them because of how far down the road I could see. This is really weird to me. I look like a little kid. I don't really grow facial hair and I'm 5'4". I was probably 5'2 at the time. I'm a guy. I'm quite small. Because of my size and look, most people turn their head when I fall or do something. Because when a little kid falls, everyone looks and rushes to their aid. While it's not exactly like that, when I fall, rarely, a few people usually ask if I'm okay or help me up. Because I look like a little kid. See where I'm going with this? This lady didn't. She didn't ask if I was okay, help me up, or anything. She just stood there. Neither did the little girl or the dog do anything. Which brings me to my last point, the dog. What dog sees someone fall and doesn't even flinch or do anything? It had a leash on, but it was on the ground. Nobody was holding it. It didn't bark, growl or anything. Still as a statue. I don't even know what happened that night. I probably never will. But it's something that will stay with me for the rest of my life. 4. Recently I went to a supposedly haunted location, St. John's Episcopal Church in Richmond. I took some pictures, no ghosts or anything. In fact, I didn't feel anything at all until I went upstairs. I got a strong sense that someone was watching me and immediately left. I'm not one to poke my head around when it isn't wanted. After that, I came directly home. I didn't think anything of it, but it's been weird around here lately. When in my room specifically, I sometimes feel as though I'm not alone or someone is watching me. I've also been hearing snapping, like as if someone's snapping their fingers to music, when no one but me is in the room. Usually this happens while I'm in bed or sitting at my computer, rather than when I'm moving around. I also take medicine for anxiety. I was on a good amount of it while falling asleep, and I suddenly got intense physical anxiety, nearing a panic attack. But no mental anxiety. The whole panic deal for those who know it, that alarming feeling, hair standing up, trouble breathing, fast heart rate. But there were no racing thoughts or panicked thoughts. I was just thinking, what the hell? I was confused. I experience sleep paralysis often. And if I don't have music playing, it will be induced. However, I had music playing and I could move just fine. I don't think it was hypnagogic anxiety either. As I've never experienced that. I've also been experiencing nausea and dizziness here and there. But I'm sick with an ear infection, so I suppose that could be debunked or whatever. I figured I'd mention it to see if it's of any value. And finally, I was lying in bed last night. The AC wasn't on, but I started to feel this cold air on my right side. I moved my hand from side to side, and it was only cold in a certain spot. Admittedly, I could have been psyching myself out, but I don't know what to think, really. If there's a ghost or spirit in my room, I don't think it's malevolent. 
I was honestly slightly worried because St. John's Church is a historic location in the relative south and I am black. But I don't think it wants to hurt me. And it's definitely creepy, but not exactly horrifying. I've never felt any evil from it. Mostly just curiosity, if that makes any sense. Almost like whatever it is, is as confused as I am. Like it wants to know why I'm here as much as I want to know why it's here. I don't really believe in ghosts either. It's perfectly plausible I'm psyching myself out. I take some medicines, but none of them are hallucination-inducing as far as I know. I just want to know what everyone else thinks, and if I should get my room saged or exercised or whatever. 5. When I was about 9 or 10 years old, I lived in Canada, Ontario, Hamilton, with my family, my mother and three younger brothers, and I've seen something I can't explain without it being supernatural. So this is what happened. We went to visit my grandmother at Toronto. I always really loved my grandmother, and still do to this day. But she always had some weird items and dolls around that would creep me out. This time she had a very creepy looking doll under her bed. My smallest brother accidentally found it, and when I took a look at it, it gave me chills. It was a porcelain doll, only its head, and had a black teardrop on its face. My grandma instantly grabbed it out of my bro's hand and put it back under the bed. She said it's supposed to be there, as if that's where it would belong. That creeped me out even more. That night we slept there, and all night long I couldn't sleep, because I felt like someone's watching me. Nothing more happened, at least there. My mom and grandma never really got along, so they were arguing about something, and we went back home to Hamilton the next night. We arrived late, at about 10 or 11 p.m. When we went inside our house, I felt really strange. It felt cold and creepy, as if the house would have been haunted. We were really tired, so my mom just made us a place in the living room to sleep. All my brothers fell asleep, I was almost sleeping, and I suddenly heard someone flush the toilet. My mom was in a different room, putting our clothes away, but I didn't really mind. I thought it must have been a neighbor. We lived in an apartment. Then, after a short while, I heard it again. This time I was sure it was our toilet. And then I heard my mom saying my name as if she'd be asking for me to help her. But I kinda acted that I was asleep. And then I heard it again, but somehow I felt that it wasn't my mom calling my name, and the toilet flushed again. But then I got quite frightened, and then again she called, but this time I was sure it really was her. So I got up, and went to the small hallway that led towards the room my mother was in. It was open slightly, and I could see that my mother was folding away our clothes. So I thought maybe she didn't need help anymore, because she didn't say my name anymore, so I went back to bed. And then again, the toilet flushed, and my mom was calling me. So this time I decided to go to my mom in the room. As I started to walk on the hallway, I was frightened to death. I literally looked in every closet and room. Their doors were always opened. In the middle of the hall was the bathroom. And its door was opened. I don't know how. But I couldn't go past the middle of the hall. I stopped exactly in the middle where the bathroom was and... Whatever I did, I could not move. Not even one more step. And then I turned towards the bathroom, and right before my eyes, I saw from nothing some smoke appear. By the way, the lights were off, and it formed into a beautiful woman, kind of Middle Ages style, with long dress, long hair, and she was only made of smoke clear white smoke, and it appeared right in front of the toilet. Guess what? It flushed again. I was totally horrified, and then it slowly turned its face toward me and started staring at me. 
but when I really got frightened was when I realized that I can't move. So I was, and still kinda am, religious. Jehovah's Witness was my mom and grandma also. So I was praying to God to help me, and instantly when I said his name, Jehovah, it disappeared. And I felt kind of dizzy, and went back to bed and fell almost instantly to sleep. The same night the fire bell rang, exactly at midnight, and everyone had to go out of the building. But there was no fire. But I've heard that one fireman said to the other, that this is impossible, no alarm glass is broken. So it literally went off on its own. So this was my story, I tried to make it short. Sorry if my grammar is bad, English is my second language, so I'm just wondering if anyone had anything similar happening with them. Note, I was fully awake, and yes, I know about sleep paralysis and hallucinations, but this was totally different. I know because I've had all of the above before. So that's it. Please let me know your stories. Much love, James. Hey everyone, Hell Freezer here, and thank you very much for listening to 5 True Paranormal Stories, Episode 54. Big thanks to everybody who allowed me to use their stories in this video. Right, uh, as I mentioned in the last video, to reset my computer, so uh, to reinstall all my programs, and that included my Adobe software, so I figured this would probably be the best time if I was going to upgrade to the Creative Cloud. This probably would probably be the best time to do it. So I've done that. So I've now got the recent version of Photoshop and Premiere Pro on my system. Uh, uh, plus a couple of other ones I'll, I'll play about with and they'll be helpful for making thumbnails and doing uh, graphics for the videos and so on. But um, those are the two main ones I need. And I'll have to... <laughs> probably have to relearn how to use them because I was on... Uh, I was on CS6, with it, which isn't that old, but it is a few years old by this point. And I do know there are a number of differences, so hopefully they're familiar enough that I can get everything I need done right now, because I'm about to go edit the audio, and then get on to making my videos. Uh, so hopefully they're familiar enough that I can get through and get my videos made, and I'll spend, uh, well, I'll probably spend this weekend playing about with the new software. And yeah, I think there was some recording stuff as well included with it, the Creative Cloud that I'll, I'll try that as well, see if it's any better for recording than Ableton, which is what was what I was using. And I'm only using Ableton because it came free with my, my, uh, my audio interface for my computer. But that's probably quite boring, so I'm going to stop boring you now and I'll head off. So until next time, thank you very much for listening and take very good care of yourselves.